But when I left Janair, my parents came to get me and my stuff and help me move back home. On that ride home, I was reminiscing about the past few years of my life. All I could think was, what have I accomplished with the last five years of my life? My parents believed in me and invested so much into me. At that point, I was depressed. I felt I had let them down. From there, I really wanted to improve my game. Hey, I see a story in here. Today, we have a look into the mind and experiences of one of the greatest Terran players in the game today and Team Liquid's first Korean SC2 Pro pickup in years, Cure. Him and I got to cover a huge range of topics from his most memorable match as a StarCraft 2 Pro to dealing with depression and performance anxiety and so much more. If you're enjoying what I do here, get subscribed, as I have no plans to stop dropping videos with amazing guests like this. If you really love what I've been putting out, consider supporting me on Patreon, the link is in the video description. I've also tried out something totally new for this video with the voiceover for the translated parts, and I really need your feedback on this, so please let me know if you enjoyed it. With that out of the way, let's jump in to my word with Cure. So Cure, uh, thank you so much for, for taking the time today, I really appreciate it. <laughs> so, how'd you first get into StarCraft? When I was little, I saw Nada playing a match on TV. I was so mesmerized by him, I became a fan instantly. After that, I begged my mom to buy me a copy of StarCraft. And that's how I got started with the game. Was your mom supportive of you being really into StarCraft? Well, first of all, it wasn't easy to even play the game that much. I had brothers, and we shared the computer, so it was hard to get time on it alone. So I would try to play on my mom's laptop. And sometimes when she would go out, she would unplug the mouse and hide it. But this goes back to a Korean saying that says, No parent can beat their child. So I would beg and plead, and in the end, she would let me play StarCraft. Okay, uh, so you mentioned Nada. W would you say that he was like your idol within the Brood War community? So at first, of course, Nada was my idol. But after I got into a pro team and started playing competitively, I started looking up to other professional players. Even now, I look up to the Brood War players who established this industry. That totally makes sense. There's too many good players to choose from. Uh, so, would you consider yourself, like at that time when you were young, like pretty good at Brood War or not really? I wouldn't say I was at the top of the game, but I did hear from other players that even if I wasn't on the first team, of the reserve players, you're the best. At least that's what I was told when I was on 8th team. But still, I wasn't that confident. There was a first team, and I didn't make the cut. So when StarCraft 2 came out, I saw that as opportunity for me. And I started focusing hard to be better in that game. Yeah, so you, you mentioned 8th team, uh, and you were on 8th team, uh, you know, in the really early days of, of StarCraft 2, and, you know, you were teammates with uh, Lee Ji Dong. Uh, did that mean a lot to you to, to be teammates with such a legendary player? Um, I think that actually affected me a lot as a player. Because in a team house environment, when you're all together, you tend to start rubbing off on one another. And of course, Jae Dong was somebody I looked up to. He was an amazing player, and I just wanted to learn all that I could from him. I, uh, I can only imagine what it's like to interact with somebody that, you know, you really look up to for a long time. Um, so, you know, when comparing StarCraft 1 and StarCraft 2, why do you think StarCraft 2 didn't have the cultural impact in Korea that StarCraft 1 did? Mm. 
개인적인 생각인데 일단 first of all this is just a personal thought. But I think it's because StarCraft 2 is quite a bit faster than Rude War in terms of tempo and especially battle-wise. And I think as a spectator, that lessened the excitement of watching the game. And then of course there were other games SC2 had to compete with. Not just Rude War, but League of Legends as well. Just a lot of competitors. And I think that is what split the attention. Yeah, first of all, thank you for giving input because that's not an easy question to answer. Um, and I actually very much agree with, with your perspective. I think uh, while I like StarCraft 2 more, and obviously maybe you do as well, considering how much you play it. Um, I think StarCraft 1 was a, is a better spectator sport because things move slower, battles take longer, there's a lot more strategic decision-making uh, during the course of the game. There's a lot more comeback potential uh, in, in StarCraft 1. So yeah, I think that those all really impacted uh the, the the public perception of of starcraft 2 relative to starcraft 1 but it's funny because obviously on the international stage starcraft 2 was much more popular in that sense i think we had a lack of star players there were a lot of bright stars in the so I think that may have been one of the issues, uh, lack of star players. Hmm. From like a personality perspective, is that what you mean? So most of the Korean pros didn't want to be too public. So they didn't use social media or YouTube. They were trying to be as secretive as possible. I think that was the primary difference between them and the overseas players. Uh, I meant relative to StarCraft 1 pros, like StarCraft 1 professionals in Korea versus StarCraft 2 professionals in Korea. But I guess realistically, the reason the StarCraft 1 pros were more famous was because the game was more famous here, right? Like, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. um, but okay, at what point in your life did you realize that StarCraft was going to be a very significant thing for you? So back when I was on Jin Air Green Wings, I felt I'd become a pro gamer because I just liked the game itself. I liked my lifestyle living in the team house environment. I was really quite satisfied. But when I left Jin Air, my parents came to get me and my stuff and help me move back home. On that ride home, I was reminiscing about the past few years of my life. All I could think was, what have I accomplished with the last five years of my life? My parents believed in me and invested so much into me. At that point, I was depressed. I felt I had let them down. From there, I really wanted to improve my games and get my achievements to the next level. And I think that's why I was able to get a GSL runner-up finish. Thank you for sharing that. It's not, it's not easy to talk about emotional struggle. Um, so I, I, I appreciate that. I think, uh, I think that's a great motivating factor. Obviously, it worked out really well for you. You, were, you know, go down as, you know, one of the better... StarCraft 2 players in Korean history. Um, and obviously, this year specifically has kind of turned out to be quite good for you, in addition to the fact that, of course, you know, you won a, a GSL Codes in the past as well. What does it mean to you that, you know, there's this long history and, and legacy of Star Leagues in Korea and you get to say that you're a Star League champion. After I achieved that silver medal finish, all I could think was, how do I become a champion? If I can just become a champion, I'll be satisfied. And I worked hard to achieve that. 
After I did, I felt the desire to do it again, to wear that crown again. I think that's the meaning I found of being a champion. Hopefully, you get the opportunity to pursue that in 2024. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so, do you have any favorite memories from your time uh, competing in Pro League? So the most memorable game of my life was actually my first game in Pro League. I have some other great memories of beating some famous players, but my first game as a StarCraft 2 Pro in Pro League was definitely the most memorable. Because back in Brood War, I played a couple of games in Pro League against Byung and Barracks, and I lost both of them because I was so nervous at the time. I wasn't really able to show off my play. So for my first game as a StarCraft 2 pro, I thought to myself, if I can't control these nerves, I can't continue to compete as a pro. I've spent my life on this game. I'm going to just play like myself. Just bet on myself, and I don't care if I lose or not. All I need to prove is that I can bear the nerves. So I think in that sense, that was the most memorable StarCraft II game of my life. Do you remember the details of the game? So it was a TVT. And I played mech. I think it was a mech first mech game. In the beginning, I remember struggling. But after that, I had a sense of what the next steps in my play should be. So it went well from there. That's awesome. That's a really, it's a really special memory. Um, so you had you had an excellent run at Gamers Eight. Uh, in Saudi Arabia, um, you know, was that performance meaningful for you to to sort of uh, you know make a really deep run, uh, you know, finals run uh, on such a big stage? Uh, I found some satisfaction in getting runner up, but at the same time, I felt my limitations as a top level pro. Ultimately, I lost, and I felt I needed to improve my basics. And also to start working out physically, which I felt could help me perform better. Makes sense. I, I would also say Rainer is pretty good. Maybe you shouldn't feel too bad about yourself. Um, you know, obviously Saudi Arabia is a pretty exotic location. Uh, what were your impressions of the country? It was the best. Everything was so nice. They really treated us the best that they could have. The hotel was good. The bed was incredibly soft. The food is great. Even the weather wasn't bad. It was really hot for sure, but with the humidity near 0%, I didn't really feel that uncomfortable. There was also a pool in the hotel, so I used that a lot. I think that kind of hospitality relieved my mind as well, so I was able to play my matches more comfortably. That, uh, that sounds fantastic. I'm, I'm glad it was a really uh, positive experience for you. Um, so, while you may not have, you know, won some big titles this year, you've made some really deep runs, you've beaten some really high-level players. Um, you know, why do you think things are, are going pretty well for you this year? First of all, I think I'm more motivated than before. Because I don't know what the future holds. For me, being older than before has made me naturally more motivated. I've also just been more focused on the game. In the past, I've had a lot of hobbies. 
but these days I've tried to cut it down to one or two. And even though I still do other stuff, I'm just trying to devote more mental energy to the game. And I think that focus has been the difference maker. I also think 10 years of experience as a pro has helped me become strong with mind control. That's great. I, uh, I think <clears throat> developing mental focus is one of the biggest problems for a lot of people, right? Like they can put a lot of hours into the game, but are those hours spent efficiently or not? Are you thinking about the game in the right way or not? Um, <clears throat> so how did you first get connected with, uh, with Team Liquid? So, Mana reached out to me in a Discord DM. And he said so many positive things to me. And at first, kind of jokingly said, Come on, join Team Liquid, man. I was just very grateful that he said a lot of positive things about me. That's fantastic. Yeah, I, uh, Mana is one of those faces that's been around in the community forever. And, and I was really happy to see him, you know, years ago get picked up by, uh, by Team Liquid. So it's, it's awesome that um, he was sort of that point of contact for you. <laughs> so what does it mean to you to now represent uh, an organization that's so celebrated and storied within this esports industry? First of all, it felt totally out of the blue. I did not expect to be contacted by Team Liquid. It's been years since they acquired a Korean player. So I didn't think that they would be interested in picking one up. So I was incredibly humbled. This is a really great opportunity for me. At the same time though, I feel that I'm being rewarded because after years of hard work and some significant championships, I think I can give myself a pat on the back. And of course, since I've gotten to this great organization, all I can think is that I need to improve myself and make some great runs for them. You're totally right. It is an excellent reward and you should be really proud of yourself. It's it's a significant achievement to join a team like that. Uh, thank you. Um, oh yeah, so when we came in here, I noticed that you had TL.net open on your computer. Uh, have you been a regular TL.net uh, reader for a long time? So there's a thing that I always do when I turn on my computer. I think it's a bit of an occupational habit. When I turn on my computer, I always open StarCraft 2 and TL.net. There's always so much information about competitions. And just everything related to StarCraft 2 on TL.net. So opening SC2 and TL has just become my routine. I, you know, I think a lot of Western fans aren't necessarily aware that uh, Korean pros frequent the website. I, uh, I think people would be really happy to see you uh, participate on there. You should start commenting on some threads. Mm. So actually, I don't have an <laughs> idea. TL. I also don't think a lot of other Korean pros are visiting TL like I am. I think this is kind of just my own thing. Perhaps the time will come and I'll make an idea on there and try to start leaving some comments. Yeah, I think people would enjoy it. Um, so were you surprised to see so much support from the foreign community um, in regards to the crowdfunding campaign for the GSL? I never expected this much support. I still get surprised every time I see the amount that the GSL is receiving. So in that sense, I just feel really, really grateful. And of course, this support is the reason that the GSL is still standing strong. And a big part of the reason we will get another GSL next year. And all I can think about is my gratitude. Back in the day, there were a lot of Korean fans. But these days, if you go to the GSL studio, you see a huge number of foreign fans. They've really become the backbone of the Korean SE2 scene. When the opportunity arises, I want to learn English, so I can say thank you to all the foreign fans out there. Yeah, I. it's really interesting to me because I, I think there's a... Uh, 
especially f under Africa ownership, there's been a there or there was a disconnect between mm, the way that GSL was being run. And what I mean by that is, for example, in the GOM TV days, uh, a lot of funds were generated by charging money to foreign fans to watch the high resolution stream. Um, you know, GOM TV had a, a way to monetize the foreign audience. Uh, but Africa never did, you know, all of the advertisements are in Korean. Um, it, it was very puzzling to me that Africa never really took advantage of what has been their largest viewer base for the last, you know, how long has Africa owned GSL? I think eight years. Another thing I noticed is the cropped version of the GSL broadcast on YouTube. So I don't understand what happened there. In general, I have no idea what their policies have been based on. So, are you familiar with the developing RTS titles uh, like Stormgate or Zero Space? I've definitely heard of a number of new RTS titles. Stormgate I'm familiar with, but Zero Space I've never heard of. Because Stormgate seems to be very similar to StarCraft 2, when it comes out, I have the passion to try and learn Stormgate while still playing StarCraft 2. At the moment though, I'm still pursuing a career as a StarCraft 2 pro. There are going to be many more StarCraft 2 tournaments over the coming years. I don't know if I'll be able to shift my attention from StarCraft 2 to Stormgate. But when the game comes, I'll try it. Right now though, my main focus is being a StarCraft 2 professional player. Yeah, I mean that makes a lot of sense. I guess we'll we'll get there when we get there. Um what do you think a real-time strategy developer has to do to be successful in the Korean market? So I think if they focus on team play, they will have a shot at success in Korea. If a new game has a high barrier to entry, it's going to struggle to get players. With a focus on team play though, you can focus on communication. The more skilled players can help newer players develop and learn the game. So I think that if a game is designed to suit team play, the chance of success will be higher. I agree. I think that team play is a really key element of success in today's day and age. People don't like having all the pressure on themselves. Um, so final question. Uh, whenever you do fulfill your military service, do you see yourself uh, returning to the esports industry after that? Uh, or, or like, what, what do you, what do you think your future might look like post military service? First off, all I want to do in life is to be helpful and useful to people. And all I've done in my life as a professional is compete in games. So I think I'll be sticking with the gaming industry as much as possible. Yeah, of course. I mean, it's been going pretty well for you so far. Um, so uh, that's about all I had prepared for you. Uh, do you have any closing words? After I joined Team Liquid, my burden has gotten heavier in some ways. I'm putting much more weight on my shoulders. I am representing the most prestigious esports organization in the world. So I'm just doing my best to live up to that. Best of luck. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Thanks so much for watching. If you like this one, be sure to leave a like and a comment down below. If you really loved it, share it with some friends and consider supporting me on Patreon. The link is in the video description. Also, be sure to let me know how you felt about the voiceover, as this was a new experiment for me with how to deliver these translated interviews. That's all for now. Until next time, friends.